いや世界は常に変化する15番目だ How's it going, everybody? It's Eon here, and welcome to day 28 of the Final Fantasy XV Countdown Retrospective. Before you proceed, I highly recommend you check out day 29, in which I showcased and discussed a second trailer that Square Enix unveiled at E3 2013 to celebrate their announcement of Final Fantasy XV, this time focusing more on gameplay and combat. In this video, I'll be following up with some new information that Square Enix shared during E3 2013. Following the announcement of the title change on June 10th, 2013, during Sony's E3 press conference, the next day, on June 11th, 2013, Square Enix hosted their own press conference called The Future of Final Fantasy, through which they not only unveiled a second, gameplay focused trailer for Final Fantasy XV, but also shared some new information regarding how v s u s 13 came to be 15, as well as other tidbits regarding the highly anticipated title. Website Kotaku best summer. The entire event, so I'll be presenting their article for you guys. The event kicked off with Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, after the disaster that was the original Final Fantasy XIV Online when it launched back in September 30th, 2010. Square Enix was forced to essentially rebuild the entire game from the ground up, and with the game only a month away now from its August 27th, 2013 re release date, the company decided to showcase a brand new trailer of the game. The presentation then finally shifted to Final Fantasy XV. They began by once again showing the reveal trailer of the game from Sony's E3 press conference. And then Shinji Hashimoto, the brand director of Final Fantasy, took the stage to share some more details. Here's what he had to say I was so excited that I had difficulty sleeping last night. I'd like to remind you that even for us, it's a huge amount of joy that we were finally able to announce Final Fantasy XV. Well, everyone is talking about the next gen consoles at this year's E3. Final Fantasy XV is being developed with a tool called DirectX 11. With this tool, it's possible to port the title to various hardware. Following yesterday's announcement, we would like to announce that we are porting Final Fantasy XV to Xbox One as well. Just like that, the general public would get official confirmation that the title was no longer a PlayStation exclusive. What's more, development for the PlayStation 3 version of the game was completely halted. The one thing that Final Fantasy XV became exclusive to was next generation consoles. After confirming that the game would be coming to Xbox One as well, the presentation proceeded with the unveiling of the second, more gameplay focused trailer that I discussed in the last Countdown Retrospective, which was released on Square Enix's official YouTube channels shortly thereafter. After Kotaku briefly described what they saw in the trailer, they proceeded by pointing out that no release window was provided for Final Fantasy XV, although the fact that it wasn't mentioned as part of the fiscal year ending in March 31st, 2014, seemed to indicate that the game would not be out by then. Thus, discussion on Final Fantasy XV ended, but towards the end of the event, a QA session was hosted, where attendees got a chance to ask about any of the titles they covered during the press conference. Here's the information that yielded about Final Fantasy XV according to Kotaku's article. The first question revolved around rumors stating that Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts 3 would not be released for Xbox One in Japan, but Hashimoto denied the rumors and stated that both titles would be coming out worldwide for both consoles. The next question asked if Final Fantasy XV marked the start of a series of games, similar to Final Fantasy XIII and its sequels. Hashimoto responded that more information will come at a later time. But noted that because Final Fantasy XV is so large, many stories may come at a later time. Kotaku then aptly speculated that he was likely referring to spin offs or DLC, the latter of which did indeed turn out to be true. Moving on, the next questioner wanted to know about the change from v s u s 13 to 15 and how that came to be, and here's the response that was given. It might be similar to the previous answer. As you know, v s u s 13 was created as part of the Fabula Nova Crystallis epic. While development was going on, the content and world expanded. To deliver in an appropriate way to the fans, we figured this might be the perfect time to evolve the title to 15 for the next gen consoles. 
The article then briefly touched upon a question regarding the game's development staff, and the response was that the main staff remains, with more excellent staff having been added over time. So if anything, the team has gotten bigger. The next question asked if Final Fantasy XV signified a move to more action-oriented gameplay for the whole series. Hashimoto pointed out that Final Fantasy changes their game systems all the time, and that while XV is indeed an action-packed game, that doesn't mean that'll be the case for the next one. On a similar topic, someone else asked if it's hard to go back to turn-based battle systems now, to which Hashimoto replied, no, it's not hard to go back. The same person then asked if it's still possible nowadays to make a multi-million dollar production that is based on the classic turn-based model, with the implication being that they might be harder to sell on a mass market level. Hashimoto replied, I believe there is a future for both action RPG and command-based RPG. Then, after a question regarding Kingdom Hearts 3, someone else asked if there would be any playable female characters in 15, noting how the cast seemed to be all male, and wondering if there was concern that this might alienate Square Enix's female fanbase. Hashimoto couldn't provide a proper answer, unfortunately, stating that the contents of the game are not discussed by him. Then, after asking the questioner which female character he liked, to which he responded Yuna from Final Fantasy X, Hashimoto closed by stating that he liked the question and would pass it on to the team. Finally, the Kotaku editor asked if there were any older Final Fantasy games that informed this new one, but Hashimoto couldn't provide a proper answer to that either, stating that this question was better left for the game's developers. He also asked if Square Enix had any plans to make Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts games for Wii U, which was released on November 2012. While Kotaku was referring to both series in general terms, Hashimoto seems to have interpreted this as Kotaku asking about Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts 3 specifically, and his response was that because the new games are being developed using DirectX 11, they have to make sure they can be appropriate for the tool. A better translation of this was provided by website The Magic Box, which states flat out that there are no plans for a Wii U version of Final Fantasy XV or Kingdom Hearts 3 because both games are being developed using DirectX 11, which Wii U is not compatible with. So that about covers all the information from website Kotaku. However, they did seem to have missed one or two bits of information. But fortunately, website Nova Crystallis managed to fill in some of the gaps through their report on what transpired in the future Final Fantasy event. One person apparently asked how the team will keep Nomura on track this time, considering the game's already lengthy development. Hashimoto replied that while Nomura is a key aspect to the project, there are many other supporting staff who will keep the game on schedule. One last topic of discussion that Kotaku missed had to do with a PC version of the game. Here's what Nova Chrysalis's article reported on the matter. A PC version has not been decided, even though Square Enix is always actively looking into PC development. Right now, the only Final Fantasy for PC will be 14. As for the PS4 and Xbox One versions, Hashimoto promises to share more information later on whether or not both versions will be launching simultaneously. Even after all these years, a PC version of the game has yet to be announced, but Square Enix has not denied the possibility either, often stating that they're looking into it. But if the Final Fantasy XIII series is anything to go by, with all three games having been ported to PC, I think there's a decent chance that XV will come to PC somewhere down the line. Anyway, that about sums up all of the information that yielded from Square Enix's future Final Fantasy event from June 11th, 2013. So with that, I would like to conclude today's episode of the Final Fantasy XV Countdown Retrospective. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below what your train of thought was back then, as all of this information trickled out to the general public. And to be further updated on all things Final Fantasy, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah! I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.